The work I will be presenting today was done together with Yu Gao, Regan Mandrick, and Kevin Stanley at the University of Saskatchewan. And it was actually part of U.S. master's research who then decided not to do a PhD, which was actually really disappointing. Um, so what I'm going to give you is a little speech of why extra games are dead and why we need to think about them from another perspective. So at this point, I think it is safe to say that it is really well established that a lack of physical activity has negative health implications and that it is important to ensure that one gets the recommended levels of activity per week. So let's say go to the gym twice a week and then play hockey or soccer one night. However, recent research results on activity patterns and health suggest that it is not just about vigorous activity, like going for a run in the evening, but also about our general behavior throughout the day. So what results show is that there are negative effects of sedentary lifestyles that are distinct from those associated with a lack of physical activity. So ironically, somebody who is physically active and exercises regularly can still be at the risk of suffering negative consequences of sedentary behavior. For example, if you work an office job and you're sitting all day and then you go to the gym at night, that unfortunately will not save you in this context. So it is not just about adults because we are kind of in charge of our own lives and we can make informed decisions. Another issue that is much, much more difficult to deal with is that a lot of children are sedentary and this is not just about screen time at home and watching too much TV or playing video games all the time. It is also about the importance of school environments actually encouraging physical activity and not just having seated classroom activities where kids are forced to be very, very calm all day long. So while younger children often engage in spontaneous physical activity, things get a little more tricky with tweens, so kids who are aged from 9 to 13, because they easily lose interest in physical activity sessions that are administered by their educators. And unfortunately, sedentary habits adopted during this period of life and during kind of the transitional phase can have lifelong consequences on these children. But fortunately, kids don't stop playing video games, and research has demonstrated that extra games can be a means of encouraging physical activity. So particularly, we were curious whether casual extra games, which are movement-based games that are easily accessible, have short setup routines, and can be played in short chunks, can be an opportunity to kind of reintegrate physical activity into the classroom and encourage more movement among school children. So what we did in our work was we set out to explore this area with a focus on the school setting. So for casual exo games to be successful in a learning environment, we feel that they should be acceptable to educators and to teachers, enjoyable for students, and provide levels of activity that do not interfere with the students' workflow at school. So our research approach consisted of three parts. We began our research with a series of semi-structured interviews with educators of 9 to 13 year old kids at a local school to figure out the requirements of casual extra games and how we could better integrate them into the classroom and also to explore teachers' views of their students' activity patterns and attitudes towards exercise. We then followed up on that in a lab study where we invited students to play Grab Apple, which is an existing previously validated casual extra game in a classroom-like setting. And we compared the movement-based version of the game to a sedentary version of the game. And we also integrated a condition where we looked into traditional exercise and how that would work out with the kids. And then in that study, we looked at activity levels and effective responses, but we were also interested in how the students' attitudes towards physical activity would be affected by engaging with the activity and how attitudes would prevail over time. So we went back and reassessed student attitudes five months after they came to campus for the initial intervention. 
So to explore teachers' perceptions of extra games, we carried out interviews with four grade seven teachers who offered to share their insights into their students' attitudes towards physical activity and their ideas to integrate technology-supported exercise routines in a school setting. All teachers agreed that students became more sedentary as they grew older, were less interested in participating in teacher-directed activity, and didn't really engage in any physically challenging play. So some teachers noted that students actually became more concerned with their bodies, with body image, and didn't like to sweat anymore. And their attitude kind of changed in a way that they thought about physically exerting play as something childish that they would no longer like to participate in. However, uh, the teachers also pointed out that the, the habits at school changed and the routines changed in a way that students are expected to sit and work for longer as they grow older. So this is a really awkward situation where the school system actually encourages sedentary behavior and students' willingness to exercise on their own time also goes down. So it really points out that there is a need for some kind of intervention that could help reintegrate activity into the classroom. Regarding the benefits of physical activities, teachers were pointing out that they felt that it kind of made students more attentive and that it actually helped them focus more on classroom activities. Three out of four teachers said that they were really interested in integrating the games into their classrooms, but there were also some teachers that voiced concerns regarding cheating, turn-taking, so the practical implications of actually trying to fit these games into the school setting. To follow up on the survey with teachers, we then went ahead and conducted an experiment on how casual extra games can be integrated into the classroom and compared to sedentary games and traditional physical activity. In our study, we invited 63 children in grade seven, 29 boys from a local school to come to campus to participate in the lab study. So this was part of an outreach activity that the university does with local schools where they visit university to learn more about science and to get little insights into university classes and life as a researcher. The age range was 11 to 13, and only six participants never played video games, so they were really computer literate and they had a good idea of what games should look like. 19 of the kids reported playing games five to six times a week, so there was quite a range in terms of playing video games. Um, the majority was also familiar with extra games, so we didn't expect any difficulties in terms of explaining how to play the game that we used for our study. Regarding physical activity, and this is something that is kind of extraordinary for schools, I think, all but one participant were physically active at school and also outside of school. So we were working with kids here who actually did participate in quite a bit of activity in the first place. And in the preliminary questionnaire, we also found out that all children were generally aware of the benefits of exercise, so they were well aware of the problem that we were trying to address. For our study, we divided the students into two groups. Um, one group would participate in the research activity and the other group would participate in another activity where they got insights into programming with Scratch and then they would take turns in the morning and the afternoon session. And for the actual study, we divided these subgroups of students into three groups of eight to 12 students. So um, the other students would be participating in the different conditions at the same time. We asked students to participate in an overall of three conditions, so playing a casual extra game, playing a sedentary version of the same game, and participating in traditional playful exercise that was facilitated by their teachers. So for example, rope skipping, running stairs, and running short distances. And each of these activities lasted about 10 minutes. For the gaming conditions, we used the previously validated casual extra game Grab Apple, and I'm gonna show you a quick video that kind of gives you a little overview of the game right now.
We apply the principles of casual game design to extra games. We call these casual extra games, which are defined as games that players can learn easily and access quickly, using simple rules and special game mechanics to motivate them to exercise at a moderate intensity for short periods of play. We design a casual extra game called Grab Apple. We follow the principles of casual game design and also make sure that players produce sufficient exertion levels to meet current guidelines for physical activity. We use the Microsoft Kinect sensor to detect players' body movement. The game concept can be simply described as picking up falling apples and avoiding bombs by using a virtual hand on the screen. We encourage players to move through the game design. First, we give score multipliers for picking up the same color of apple. Second, the hand can only hold five apples, so players need to jump to empty the hand by reaching the apple bag. Third, when a worm appears, players need to run to press any key on the keyboard to get extra points. Fourth, people jump and duck to get bigger apples, which are worth more points. Finally, in harder levels, we increase the speed of falling apples and bombs. So, in our study, we used this game controlled with the Kinect for the exercise condition, and we used the mouse for sedentary input. For the procedure of our study, we collected demographic information and attitudes towards exercise and asked students to record heart rates and effective states as baseline information. And both were measured again after each of the conditions. And we also collected data on perceived exertion and player experience. At the end of the study, we collected post-intervention attitudes toward exercise and we also gave students room to give us some final feedback. And these are these three points, sorry. So let me give you an overview of our main findings. Um, our results show that exercise and extra game condition actually both induced an intense workout in the students. With the extra game condition encouraging moderate to vigorous exertion and exercise creating workout at almost maximum intensity. Interestingly, students' perceived exertion and quotes actually reflected these differences, showing that they are well aware of the signals that their bodies are sending about exercise levels. In terms of affect and player experience, we found that both extra game and exercise resulted in higher levels of arousal than sedentary play, and ratings for fun showed that participants enjoyed the extra game condition more than traditional exercise, which is also backed up by qualitative data that we gathered at the end of the study. One last thing that we looked into in the initial study and then followed up on after five months were students' attitudes toward exercise. We came up with a series of statements that were in line with the opinions of teachers. So for example, students being able to focus better after exercise because we were interested in whether students' attitudes reflected the perceptions that teachers had and the benefits that they saw. So what you can see in this figure is that student attitudes towards exercise were neither overly positive nor really negative. And we noted a significant decrease in opinions on exercise after the study, but no significant difference between any of the activities themselves. When looking at quotes, um, we discovered that students with negative opinions often noted that exercise made them tired and therefore made it difficult to focus, but that others felt more alert, suggesting that students had a very detailed view on the impact that exercise had on their body. On a general level, what our results show is that exercise and extra game condition both provided intense workouts, with the extra game condition being at an intensity level that is less likely to negatively influence students' ability of participating in classroom activities as a result of exhaustion that we saw in the traditional exercise condition. The results of the player experience survey showed that students had more fun playing the extra game than doing traditional exercise, and that students would consider playing casual extra games during a break more than they would consider doing traditional exercise. So this suggests that casual extra games are a promising opportunity to break up routines at school with exercise. However, there are a couple of things that need to be addressed by future work. So one concern voiced by teachers was um, that the practical requirements of the deployment of games, so for example, finding appropriate spaces at school and setting up systems that are robust enough to work without continued maintenance are really important steps that need to be taken before we can actually just leave these games at schools and see how students engage with them there. 
Another aspect that we were really curious about was um, is whether the high levels of fun that were reported while playing Grab Apple are a result of the novelty of the approach and being able to do something else that you usually maybe wouldn't do in a classroom setting. So looking into whether these effects wear off over time would be really important to assess the long-term effectiveness of casual extra games as an intervention to promote activity. So to wrap this up, our work is a first exploration of how we can fit casual extra games into a school setting and how we can help schools provide activities that can encourage short bursts of activity throughout the day among students to avoid negative consequences of sedentary behavior. What I would like you to take away from this talk is that casual extra games are a means of breaking up long stretches of sedentary behavior and the special characteristics of these games, so being being interruptible, being playable in really short chunks and having easy setup routines make them well suited for the deployment in schools. So what we are imagining is that these games could be played during lunch breaks, during recess, during short bits and pieces where there are switchovers between classes. Um, so really in the bits and pieces of life at school where you have idle time and where you could be engaging in something that is physically stimulating. Additionally, what I'd like you to talk, take away from our results is that teachers were actually quite positive towards the integration of these games in the classroom setting and that they saw potential of engaging students who are no longer interested in physical activity in physically encouraging and challenging play. So, this actually shows that casual extra games might be a promising opportunity to encourage students to establish healthy activity patterns, which might translate into healthier lifestyles during adult life. Thank you very much.